Hi and welcome to Serious Up Gaming. My name is Charlie and this is the home of cool things like a monthly magazine dedicated to all things tabletop. We've also got cool things like podcasts, reviews, mystery boxes and more. But of course that's not forgetting our YouTube channel where you are at the moment. Be sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date with everything that we're up to. But today what we're up to is this. This is Feralis Obscure Land and we're going to take a first look. Now what we have in our hand is the core set. It is a head of a Kickstarter project. So just be aware of a couple of things. First of all, disclaimer, that this is going to be a little bit different when it gets to your hands in retail. So our, the version that we have um, might have a change in components. The rule book isn't final. The inserts are different, for example. So this is here to give you an idea of what it is, how it plays, if there's anything particularly cool about it, but will not give you a full version of what you might pick up on the shelf at retail or that you might receive through Kickstarter directly because it's just a prototype at the end of the day but more than enough for us to sink our teeth into. Secondly if you want to check it out for yourself you can find a link in the description to pledge for your own copy. And finally just be aware that because this is a prototype we've got some different bits and bobs in here so some of them are stretch goals for example I will point those out when I'm aware of them and there may be some changes before it reaches Kickstarter too. But without further ado let's take a proper look so if you want to see that original artwork you'll see this this is a game by Dear Games Studios. This is our core set and it's got that rather epic artwork on the front too. Now if we spin this around you'll see that we've got a nice long description of what it is that the game is. We've got a bit of a setup there for you so you can see what you're going to find when you start playing um, and some details below about our usual say the fact that it takes 30 to 60 minutes to play that it's for ages 14 and over which I think is pretty accurate when you see the artwork um, and also that it is for 1v1 however there might be some leeway in that in the kickstarter so we might be looking at sort of options for 2v2 for example and that's something this game is quite flexible there are things about how to create your own decks or you can play with what's here already there's lots of information and lots of sort of scope to increase what this is but we've now opened it so let's see what's inside and we start with this which is the rule book again not final but has everything we need to sort of get started in there lots of pictures which for me great um, and an index on the back in case you need to find something quickly whilst you're playing the next up we've got the player boards I'm a fan of a player board I like knowing where to put stuff so this is quite nice to have and because this is the two player set and um, you'll get two of these in the box so we've got our red one and then we equally have our blue one which is exactly the same just with a little bit of color for some added distinction and you'll have those opposite each other so mine will lay out in front of me and my fellow players will lay out in front of them so that everything makes sense to you from the angle you're at presuming you're opposite each other now inside the box itself this is perhaps what I mean about things will change in terms of insets and um, but it's quite nicely packaged as it is and especially for a prototype now inside here we've got you'll see going from the top we've got some dice we've got some card holders here I'll show you those in a moment um, and then we've got some bits and bobs we've got d20s we've got some little tokens we've got our first set of cards at the bottom here and then we have four packs of cards here now these are part of stretch goals just be aware and if you find these exciting keep all fingers crossed and spread the word for those stretch goals but let's go from the top so to begin with we have multiple d6s these are really good for sort of marking turns where you are and um, so you can sort of count down as you need to using those specifically and um, similarly but not exactly the same with these d20 now at the end of the day they are just dice that i'm showing you but it's nice that they're color themed to the palette of the game i always appreciate when that's the case because it can be quite jarring when it's not we've also got those card holders these serve to help obscure the vision. So if I didn't want you to see, although this isn't the card I necessarily use, we'll pop that in there and I can pop that in front of me. I can check it with just a glance, but you can't see it. It's a really easy way to hide those things and make it a little bit more tense and what's gonna happen. Last up, we have those tokens, which are shields. So one side marks for shield and one side marks a broken shield. And there are a couple of those but there are more tokens within the boxes that I'm going to show you now. So we'll start with Screel. Um, we'll take a look at a couple of different cards um, and see what you think. And I'd love to hear, by the way, in the comments what it is that you do think of these. So let me know. Now, we have extra tokens with different markers on. So this one, for example, is a five. We've also got three and two. And then we've also got 
some sort of plus or minus three up to five, I believe, that go in there as well. They're a little bit tricky to see in there, but they give you an idea of the sort of tokens you're gonna get. Now, we have each of these cards. So these are from the Screel deck, um, and we'll show you, for example, the Queen Screel and the Iridescent Screel. Now, what you'll notice about these is that they have two sides. So you'll have one at the top, or you can flip it over, and you'll have one there with different stats. So whilst it's the same card, it has different abilities depending on how you choose to play it. You have sort of a, a lighter version, I would say, and then perhaps a more corrupted version, which give you different power-ups. You'll see those on there. And that's a decision you're going to have to make when you play them out onto the field. Is it that you want to go for the sort of more hard hitting, but you might sacrifice different things. So you need to be responsive to the field in front of you. If I give you another example, the iridescent squeal that I said about, if we start with this brightly coloured green fella at the top here who has the ability to upgrade your catalysts by one. You'll see from the numbers at the top that it will take four turns to send him out onto the battlefield. Now, if instead we were to flip him round, we would have six turns to get him to the battlefield. He looks rather more evil, rather more corrupted, wouldn't you say? Um, but he will allow you to recharge by five an exhausted catalyst. So he's more powerful in that sense, but much longer a wait to get onto the field. Now, of course, these can be absolutely worth it, but you need to also consider what your opponent is going to be doing. Are they playing a long game or are they going to try and get you in the smaller bites quicker so you have no opportunity to bring this guy out? And across all of these, the artwork is actually really nice to see. It's very heavy fantasy. It's very vivid and evocative. And this perhaps is why 14 plus seconds might be a good age range for this but high fantasy, good fun, exactly what you would expect from the sort of theming of this game. Now to show you some other cards, we'll move into the Gilmora deck. And inside there, we begin with the High Priest Gilmora herself. Now again, we have two forms. And you'll find that this deck has much more around it. So we've got an Abyssal Gilmora, a Whisperer Gilmora, and more. We also have our main card, which is Malik the Reaper. Doing the same with the Vulcan deck, we have as our main character, we have the King of Vulcan. You see him there looking rather fancy. And then we flip him round as his corrupted version. And the full art card there being Morgul. But again, artwork that's in keeping with the deck itself. And this one's slightly brighter than previous decks before finally the morale. And I will just take the moment just to say I really like that the artwork wraps around on these as well. It's just one of those little touches that's quite nice. And inside here, we have things like deserter morale in our, again, two different colors. Now the main card with Zagal, the renegade as your full card there. Now I mentioned about changing those over. I mentioned about bringing them out onto the field and how long that takes, but to combine all of those together, we have our little card holders. We'll pop one of those in when we choose to play them onto the field and we will pop them in front of me so that the player in front can't see them, but I can quite easily. Equally, we'll then use one of the dice to denote how many turns it is before it can reach onto the field and we'll see that. So if I spin that round, you can see that I will move that hopefully in order if I'm not just rolling it. So there you have it. That's for our less obscure land and it is headed to Kickstarter. So again, the link will be in the description so that you can check that out. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, whether this looks like one that's for you, whether you've seen this about or whether you like games of a similar style. Just love to talk about games in the comments. So pop those below. Now, if you're looking for more information on this before the Kickstarter launches, be sure to check out their website. There is also a YouTube channel they've got that's got some interesting things about how to build a deck that's worth checking out. But I hope this gives you a rough overview of what you might find inside the box. To find more from us, head to tabletopgaming.co.uk. There's some links in the descriptions and be sure to like and subscribe. But as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.